Hey guys, it's Chris from Ocean's Edge School. I'm here today to talk about a few ways on how to approach playing keyboard in a, uh, in a worship band setting. Um, today we're going to be looking at a few different concepts and techniques um, on playing keyboard and then later applying them to one of Chris Tomlin's newest songs called Our God. The equipment we'll be using today is I got this Korg M3 sound module. Um, I have a Yamaha S80 keyboard I'll be using as a MIDI controller. DigiDesign inbox for my MIDI interface for my computer and from the computer I'm running Ableton Live which is a music creation software. I'll be running just a couple of loops from there. And then down below here I got a, um, a MIDI foot switch board to, to trigger and control the volumes of the, of the loops. Okay before we get started on using different sound patches and, uh, and creating layers let's just take a look at, um, at the chords of the song to make sure we're all on the same page. Really, there's only two progressions we need to know, and that's the verse progression of the song and the, um, and the chorus progression. This song is in the key of B, and so uh, even though the song doesn't really have a piano part in it, we'll just be using a piano patch to, so, to let you hear the chords a little more easier. So the, the verse starts out with um, the six minor chord, or the, the G sharp minor, for the key of B, to the E, and then back to the B. That I'll repeat. to the 2 minor, go to the C sharp minor, and then to the F sharp chord, which is the 5 chord. And then if you know the, uh, the arrangement of the song, that'll, that'll repeat again. So all together it kind of sounds like this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, C sharp minor, F sharp. And that'll lead, that'll lead straight into the, uh, the chorus. The chorus progression is going to be um, kind of the same thing over and over, real simple. G sharp minor to E to the B and then F sharp. Except for the verses, the, uh, the choruses, the bridges, and all instrumentals will all be the same. It'll just be that same progression. The G sharp, E, B, F sharp. There's a few, uh, there's a few different inversions in the songs in certain parts. Um, whether it be like G sharp D, B over D sharp, and then F sharp over A sharp. Let's start with um, with really seeing how the keyboards can be uh, more of a supporting role with this song by creating different synth pad sounds and atmospheric sounds. Kind of just the basic, fundamental like warm pad sound. So what I have there is just an analog pad sound with a with a low pass filter on it. simple, real warm. And then um, for like these kind of like slower songs and more more ambient songs you could say, I like to add this like a like a higher resonance like sparkle, ear candy you can say. It sounds kind of like this. So that's what I'll start with um, kind of as the song starts as we go through the verses. I'll start with. And then as the song builds, as the dynamics increase and then decrease again, um, I'll fade in a few more layers and then um, also taking them out as like the dynamics come down. So there's a lot of fading, a lot of, um, um, a lot of mixing sounds. And so another layer I'll add on top of the, on top of the pad and the sparkles is kind of like a, um, it's like a, a resi sawtooth sound. This is what it sounds like by itself. And then I have a, a filter sweep on it that I'll throw in for fun. Kind of do that whenever I feel it. So with with the three with the three layers mixed together, the pad, the sparkles, and the kind of the resi sound, it sounds like this. I feel it. I have I have in the mix here, um, like a, a rhythmic, like eighth note, pulsating pad. But that's not totally necessary, so I won't throw that in all, in all the time. It's just kind of like 
you know, when you're feeling it. So that's what I'll start with um, with my with my synth module. So really, I got four layers going there. Um, Three for, three for the most part, and then sometimes that pulsating pad. Another useful tool I like to use is, uh, is Ableton Live, which I mentioned earlier, running from my computer. Um, first of all, the school, for most of the songs that we play, we, the majority of the time we use a click, so we're all on the same page tempo-wise. This helps sync up um, any kind of delays or like tremolos, modulation, modulation effects. Um, so this makes it easy for me to run to run loops that's in sync with what the drummer is playing because he's got the click in his ears also. And so um, I have a few loops running from the computer. This is what they sound like together without any of the, uh, the synth module. And I have this MIDI control board to, uh, to trigger and then control volumes down here. This is what they sound like together and uh, I'll solo them for you. I got kind of like a glitchy tonic pad. It's just it's just the one note, which is B, just on tonic, and then it kind of shifts around pitch-wise a little bit. And then on the other side, I have this reverse kind of progression. It, it, it mimics the um, it mimics that electric guitar line. It kind of sounds like this. So it kind of mimics that a little bit. There's different harmonics in there. And then with the pad. And then both, both of those, it kind of has like a washed out sound. I just added like um, a little bit of EQ, some compression, a little bit of delay, but also um, an auto filter curve, which kind of curves off the high end and low end of it. <clears throat> Excuse me, to kind of give it that like, boxy sound like you're listening through it to it like through a can or something um, so I'm running those and um, as the song builds and then comes down I'll I'll be fading them in and out because I have the expression pedals down here um, so here let me play let me play through like like a bigger chorus with with kind of the full sound so you can get an idea of what it sounds like alright here we go of what it would sound like all together. Um, again, there aren't really like strict piano parts or, um, or even electric piano parts. For this song, I, I stick to mainly atmospheric sounds and um, really take on more of a supporting role because it's electric guitar driven and then obviously the, the main focus is on the words and the melody of the song, so I don't want to get in the way or anything. So I try to avoid um, playing a lot of lower notes, um, more on the lower quarter of the keyboard just because bass kind of occupies that region and then um, sometimes I'll, I'll add some of the some higher voicings to the to the chords just to give it a little more interest and um, kind of fill out a, a broader space of the musical spectrum. Thanks for watching if you guys have any questions about any any of this kind of stuff feel free to contact us by either leaving a, a comment or a question either on the YouTube page or uh, oceansedgeschool.wordpress.com that's our blog or if you have any questions in general about the school, feel free to visit OceansEdgeSchool.com. And uh, so that's it for now. Be sure to stay tuned in for future tutorials, and we'll see you next time.